Yeah, look at that. Look at these freeloaders. They sit on that couch so much, had to put a cover on it. However, we have a surprise freeloader. You're not supposed to be over there. Well, it's time to open up shop. See what we have in store for y'all today. Okay, everybody, so welcome back to the world's worst fishing, lure making TV. I'm your host, Chris Jones. Today, we have an exciting video because it's new mold day. However, before we get to that, let's look at some recent work here. So this is a really fun pattern. I did a video on this one maybe two, two and a half years ago called like most vivid effect. Um, it's a capsuled bait brushed with some dip your car hyper shifts. Okay, so we have ZGA, I believe there in the nose and then GC47, um, GC47, which is sort of this kind of bluish pearl in the body. And uh, they're just kind of splotched in there. And then the top is ZTP hyper shift, right? Really, really awesome color, awesome effect, a lot of depth and illusion to it. And then another cool thing, we haven't done this in a while. I did some bluegills, some orange belly bluegills in the five inch mold. You can see lots of cool layering in there, you know, start with your orange, then sort of like a see-through layer of white pearl, a blue vein, and then a green pumpkin top. That's actually a dead on goose turd uh, color on the top there, dead on orange, uh, a dead on snow shine, for the white pearl and then uh, lure works thalo blue chilling over there for the blue okay guys welcome back to the world's worst fishing i'm chris jones thanks for being here today and taking time out of your busy schedules to watch us play with glitter in our garage um, before we get started like subscribe hit the notification bell um, that way you don't miss any uploads and uh, today's going to be a fun video because we are in completely new territory for me as a bait maker um, I've made very few saltwater lures and I've never made a shrimp. So this is a first for me and um, we're going to take you guys along. I think it's going to be super cool. Josh had this idea a long time ago. I remember I was out triple tail fishing um, maybe two years ago or um, maybe probably Thanksgiving break before last. Okay, so we're going way back. Uh, I was out triple tail fishing with live shrimp and I just sent Josh a text Hey man, can we get an open pore shrimp mold? And he just kind of, you know, jokingly blew me off. Yeah, buddy, I'll get right to that. Lo and behold, uh, here we are a while later and um, he uh, finally decided to make one. So I'm really excited. Um, shrimp colors are de uh, deceptively complicated. You know, they, they look just kind of see-through and molten browns and stuff. That's really hard to do. But we're gonna try for something like that and then we'll probably make a more popular saltwater color, um, you know, the, the new pennies of the world, the electric chickens, things like that, um, just to kind of show you how this mold wears those kind of colors. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look. Super exciting, new mold day, can't beat it. Okay, here it is, the Angling AI Molds Open Pour Shrimp. Look at that. From CAD drawing to real life. Well, technically that's showing it um, right side up so I'd have to be showing it like that of course but um, you're looking at the inverse so you actually pour it upside down so whatever color we want on top we will layer in there first and then uh, finish out the belly um, so yeah really cool there um, let me run through uh, my text messages here it was really cool Josh sent me uh, some really cool images of it while it was kind of being drawn uh, so it is 3.88 inches long 0.36 inches wide and uh, here was the uh, here's a picture of the first uh, prototype test mold and then real quick while we're thumbing through some uh, pictures of it here in development um, he actually showed me a picture of the very first one yeah so here are some of the first ones ever done I don't know if it is the first one but um, I'm going to have to ask Gary for the recipe on that. Look at that. And, the, and then that one that one on the back uh, isn't too shabby too. I like the chartreuse tail. That is absolutely stunning. Uh, so we are gonna try our best today. Um, 
we are in some uncharted territories uh, in terms of a shrimp bait. I've never made a shrimp bait, and I'm really not too familiar with saltwater baits. Um, I've got a color idea in mind, and um, <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the best I can tell y'all is we're going to experiment with something brand new today and take y'all along. So being that we're technically making a saltwater lure today, um, we're going to be using a pretty firm plastic. Um, I imagine a lot of you out there who, who would buy this mold, um, you know, for personal use or to sell, um, are definitely going to want to use a durable plastic, you know, throwing a, a shrimp on the flats or, um, you know, wherever you might, brackish canals for saltwater fish. You know, generally a firmer type durometer plastic is used, you know, since uh, a lot of critters out there have a lot of teeth. Um, the firmest plastic that I have in my rotation is craw tube. However, dental plastic does make a saltwater blend just for situations like today, but we're going to go with craw tube plastic, which I think will work excellent for a bait this size. Okay. So we got the fishing all out bait makers, hot plate set to 260. Um, so 260 is where I would pour say the bot worms or ribbon tail worms. You know, anytime you have an open, um, a sort sort of these these kind of open um, flat molds that are going to sit flat on the table. Okay, um, I don't need as much heat. So for example, a swim bait mold. Okay, that's going to sit vertically, right? The heat has to transfer into the cat actually into the plates more. All right. So I actually need more heat to bring this up to full temperature than I do to this. If that makes sense, uh, especially once you start talking about uh, larger size plates, right? You know, um, you got to have a lot of heat to heat up this entire, all of these surfaces. But these you can get away with a little bit lower temperature. Uh, so 260 is what we're going to go with. And um, time to measure out some plastic and try to build a shrimp color for the very first time. All right, so we have our uh, craw tube blend mixed out there. And um, for this one, we're going to go with um, somewhat of a more natural type color um yeah and then and then the next color we'll do will be kind of like a lot a loud bright saltwater color so we're going to start with some scupper nog all right there's a few drops of nog i love me some scupper nog yeah there again not a ton of saturation going on all right that's pretty. We'll probably darken it with one drop of black. Yeah. And then a smidge of green highlight. This is very similar to how I make my uh, top color on my hickory shad, as I like to call it. It's probably a little bit too much highlight there. All right. <clears throat> You want just a micro smidge of green highlight or else it just turns the whole thing green. So yeah, this will be, uh, and, and who knows if this will really look like a shrimp necessarily, but it's a good natural color that I had in mind that, uh, that hopefully will work out nicely. Yeah. All right, here we go. Let's, uh, let's see what happens. We're just going to kind of start it in there and pour it till we feel like it's sort of in the halfway up mark in terms of being a laminate. Maybe pour it a little bit up there. All right. Yeah, I think that's not too bad. Again, this is a, a very, very first for me. I am not uh, Benjamin Buford Blue. I do not know my shrimp. I'm not an expert on all things shrimp. But I think that might look pretty spiffy. Yeah, there they are. Looking good. Yeah, I think that'll look pretty nice. All right, and so for the bottom color, we're again going to do a shade of brown, but a very light shade of brown. All right. MF non-bleed olive, okay? 
a really, really nice kind of natural brown shrimpy type color. You know, a lot of pictures of uh, particularly gulf shrimp that we have down here were sort of these off creamy shades of brown. So something literally just like that. Not, not clear, but, but not a whole lot going on. Um, so yeah, we might, yeah, you know what? We're just going to leave it there. And then we were actually going to spike it with a little bit of blue highlight just to give it some sheen. Okay. So a little bit of blue highlight, not a lot. We don't necessarily want it blue, but we want it to have that kind of highlight, um, shimmery effect to it, which to me, um, always makes a bait pop in the water. Shrimp probably don't have highlight effects like the scales of a shad. Um, but to me, it just looks good in the water. Highlights always, again, highlights usually make a bait pop in the water. And then just to give it a little bit more extra shine, maybe just a little bit of small silver flake. You know, again, with emphasis on more realism in this color, but we're gonna give it a few little additives to, to spice it up. All right, let's fill one in. Let's see what happens. It's a lot like pouring the jerk bait, in my opinion. Oh yeah, nice and clean. Right on. That's actually looking very shrimpy. Very shrimpy. Very, very shrimp. So the new term of the day is shrimpy. Yeah. Always exciting doing something that you've never done. Even when you've been uh, making soft baits as long as I have, there's, there's still... There's still something that you've never done, you know, that, uh, that, that you can explore and have a good time with. Yeah. Yeah, these are going to be incredibly realistic looking shrimp. Oh, the wind just blew the stream. Um, these are going to be incredibly realistic looking or really fugly. Look at that. That is so cool. So inspiring that it's something new. And uh, we do have an exciting addition. We are bringing back the drum rolls. We finally found a pair of drumsticks. Um, so these are open pores. You know what, I'll have to flip one over. All right, here we go. Drum roll please, the first ever AI open pore shrimp. First ones we've ever done here on camera. Here we go. Dun, 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 dun. All right, we'll just start from the left. Yeah, look at this. Really hope these turn out, y'all. I know nothing about shrimp. Gonna have to watch Forrest Gump again and learn. Oh, oh, that's exciting. Oh, I'd say that came out looking like a natural shrimp. Look at that. And I have something rather exciting to tell y'all about the eyes. We're not done with the eyes, by the way. Um, however, let me get this other one out. Golly. Is that not shrimp-tacular? Shrimpy? Yeah. Okay, so the eyeballs, right? See the eyeballs stick up quite a bit, which is a very prominent feature on a shrimp. Okay, if we look closely, oh, hello everyone, the little eyeball, uh, I guess, holes <laughs> there in the bottom of the cavity are the diameter of the bloodline inserts. <clears throat> um, I believe for the five inch and six inch bloodlines. Um, I can get confirmation on that, but you can actually, um, if you have the bloodline insert mold, you can make some of those and then clip them off and then actually insert them in there and then pour over it to have different color eyes. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get out some dotting paint, some LuraWorks dotting paint, and we're just gonna kinda dot the eyes in black dotting paint 
um, which I think will set them off really well. All right, so we basically have a, uh, a little paintbrush Oop. dipped in Lureworks black dotting paint. And uh, so essentially, we're just gonna kinda just dab the top of the eyeball there. Oh, let's see if I can get a little bit, a little bit better uh, shot here. Just gonna kind of dab the tops. Luckily, they stick up pretty high, so hopefully we won't get any paint on the actual body of the bait. Yeah, so something like that. Just a little subtle, subtle uh, addition there. Yep, that's one of the coolest things that we have ever done in the history of World of Earth Fishing. Look at those. Just that little black eye, just that little dot, just to me, just completely sets it off. Look at that. Man. Heck, I would eat those. Oh. Excellent. What do y'all think? This is the mold that we all needed, that we never knew that we needed it. So I'm looking at um, shrimp colors, right? The gulp color lineup and uh, DOA shrimp lineup and pretty much any other shrimp bait that I can find. No wonder New Penny is so popular. Saltwater colors suck. Like these shrimp colors are just I don't know, puke. They, uh, they, they need to get with the color building program. Okie doke, New Penny. So um, I like to use a copper pearl base for New Penny. Kind of gives you that burnt orange um, that is synonymous with the color. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in there. All right, stir that in. Always stir counterclockwise or else your baits are going to turn out like garbage. Yeah, look at that. This will be a, a much more uh, saturated color. Yeah, looking good there. All right. Probably could have even gone, gotten away with a little bit less. But uh, hey, that'll work. All right, and then some medium black flake. Hmm. Uh, Actually, that's probably enough black flake. You know, and, and again, making custom baits yourself at home, you don't have to match something exactly like you see it in the store. You know, part of the fun and half the charm is kind of making the baits your way, right? So that's uh, kind of what we always try and keep in mind. All right, so there's sort of our burnt orange, the black flake top, yeah. And, uh, and so a couple things you could do from here. You could add maybe a drop or two of red, of your favorite red. You could even add, um, in fact, we'll probably even add a drop of black just to kind of darken the base just a little bit. Okay. You could, uh, you could even spike it with some highlight. You could do a lot of things, but we're just going to leave it just like that. All right, here we go. Let's pour the orange part, and um, we're going to laminate it the same way. We're just going to kind of start right down in the in the body portion there. We're going to bring our plastic up towards the tail and then bring it down. And then uh, gravity and heat will do the rest. It will even it out and it will kind of blend that orange up into the tail there. So what we get is a nice gradient of color. We're going to have a nice fade of that orange down into the body. And this is how you achieve it. Yeah. Okay, and for the other side, the bottom side, we're gonna go with a violet highlight base, okay? All right. And then we're actually gonna dull that with a little bit of brown. We're going to use the super duper light brown, the olive from MF, which again gives it sort of a natural flavor. Okay. But you definitely need like a pearl 
and um, I really like the um, yeah you can see kind of the pink in there this is just how I've kind of always made new penny I've gone with the copper orange top and then a violet highlight belly you know tweak it as you see fit you know you can make it a little bit different each time but that's essentially the the two color uh, bases I guess you could call it that I choose to work with um, so from there a little bit of black flake of course just to give it some texture yeah a little bit of that Let's see if that uh, yep that looks like plenty on a whole lot and then we're going to add some small hologram silver flake yeah super cool there look at that all right so some of that to really really kind of make it our own all right let's fill her in yes sir new pennies Needs a little bit more there in the body. Yeah, good. I don't think that's over poured. Yeah, that's looking new penny ish. It's looking shrimpy and new penny ish. Well, again, these are colors that I rarely do. I, I do not have a ton of uh, experience with these, but it's good to get out of your uh, comfort zone. There it is. That is world's worst fishing's new penny. <laughs> yeah, I think that'll do it. That'll work, you guys. Check that out. Let's uh, zoom in. Look at that. Yeah, check it out. Now we've got enough for two cocktails. Yep, I went ahead and uh, did the did the little. Uh, black splotches there on the eyeballs so yeah looking really good and what's crazy is we still have the AR frogs laid out from uh, last week's video so the two new molds hanging out uh, right next to one another here on my cutting board all right guys we are down here on Florida's Forgotten Coast we are at uh, where are we Ball Point State Park. it's called Bald Point State Park you can see a lot of uh, just kind of estuary marsh behind me. We're gonna rig up these shrimp and uh, hopefully have some action for y'all. I'm down here with my boy James. I hired a, a professional to, to help showcase the bait. So we're gonna get them set up here. Yeah, look at this area. This is why it's called the Forgotten Coast. Almost no development, which is nice. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, that'll do it. Got a three foot leader on. Time to go bounce this shrimp around. Hey, what do you think? Right. Say hello to say hello to James Parsons, everyone. What's happening? He's been on the channel a few times, but uh, this is his realm down here, so we're gonna go do it. So these oyster bars, oyster beds, whatever you want to call them. Fish like to run along those eating. And a lot of times they're eating shrimp. Yeah, we'll try to get some uh, footage of it bouncing along the bottom. The water clarity is not too good right now. It's it's low tide, so it's a little dirty. But if we can find a spot, may have to go over where the actual beach is on the other side of the big sandbar. But we'll get some footage of it in the water for sure. All right, so update. Everyone's struggling. There's a lot of people out here. There's dudes over there. There's a guy over there trying to get finger mullet. Nobody's catching anything, but let's look at this shrimp in the water here. Visibility is a little tough, y'all. Yeah. All right, give her a couple hops. Yeah. Kind of an interesting spot here. There's a culvert goes under the road and the tide is ripping through creating this you know pocket down here with all this current 
coming in from uh, the bay over there. And we were told to fish here, that the fish will sit up in this current. So we're going to, uh, I guess, mess around here for a little bit. Throwing the shrimp around. And uh, see if we can make something happen. Now, nah, looks like we got a trader. Switch the live shrimp. Just to see if it's, just to see if it's the bait that's not putting out. And yeah, he hadn't caught a dang thing. Well, so it turns out that the Forgotten Coast forgot to have fish. But no, seriously, um, happy Easter weekend, everyone. Um, Sorry we did not get that fish catch. We were actually colored pretty shocked. There were a lot of locals down there who had caught a lot of redfish the day before and uh, and in the weeks past who, uh, who all struck out too. We even had a live shrimp as a backup. Am I in focus? We even had a live shrimp as a backup in case we couldn't catch anything on, our, on artificials and just kind of wanted to salvage our day just completely off camera removed from the video. And um, we went to a couple more spots and never even got a bite on live shrimp. So, um, yeah, it was it was just a bad day of fishing, which, you know, is no stranger to me. But um, in any event, we tried our best, but uh, had a lot of fun. You know, I've rarely ever thrown shrimp. I think a few times in my life on the flats, you know, I would throw the DOAs and, and the gulps and, um, you know, catch fish, whatever. Um, Mostly live bait fishing, though. Um, you know, just me and my past saltwater fishing. I've usually been live bait fishing. Um, but anyway, no, it was it was super cool. The mold's great, guys. Um, super fun to pour. It's got a lot of depth to it, and it's wide enough that it pours very easily. It's very pourable, and you can fit a lot of detail in there. Um, you know, you can even lay in like a little bloodline insert or something to have like the internal vein. Um, there's going to be some cool things that I cannot wait to see you guys do with this mold. So, in the event, 33 bucks can't beat that. Um, has an amazing profile in the water. Um, I can't wait to uh, to see somebody who really knows what they're doing get a hold of it because um, I know it's going to do awesome things. So, anyway, guys, uh, it's early in the morning. I'm like <clears throat> still waking up here, but I wanted to get a quick outro and um, you know just say happy Easter and uh, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. We'll see you guys in the next video. And um, yeah, thanks for tuning in.